density means it's a substance where it has got the mass per unit volume concept this area what it covers is the force exerted per unit area is called as the pressure from the atmosphere the pressure is exerted such kind of a pressure is called as atmospheric pressure tangent drawn to a point will give you the direction of the flow such kind of a flow is called as streamline flow Hello everyone I'm Brinda from Department of Physics welcoming you all to chapter 10 chapter name is mechanical properties of fluids session 1 so let us see first of all what is meant by fluids so as you can see here in this picture fluids are the ones whose molecules are loosely packed correct loosely packed in the sense it is much looser than that of your solid packing okay in solids the intermolecular forces of attraction is to very greater but when it is compared to that of a liquid it is slight less okay so the liquids always take the shape of a container because it is a shapeless quantity okay so now as you all can see in this picture the points of the fluids can be like it takes the shape of a container it takes shape of a container and it has got very less intermolecular forces of attraction so we are going to study some of its properties of the fluids in this chapter so let us go to density what is meant by a density density means it's a substance where it has got the mass per unit volume concept and the density is determined in terms of rho this is the symbol to determine the density so density is nothing but ratio of mass per unit volume mass per unit volume is called as your density and the symbol most often used for density is this and it is pronounced as rho So in order to check the density you have certain set of equations wherein you will actually check the density with respect to suppose if you have a container of certain depth and there is a point o just check the pressure at this point o with the help of this density so we just consider certain imaginary points wherein we calculate the area of this and the height of this container from where we are actually checking the pressure from this height to this height you will have the height as h and the density is given as rho so i am just using this rho density so where exactly you use the concepts of density is what actually we are checking so when you just check up the pressure at certain depth of certain water tank any of the container you are taking which is filled with the water and you check the pressure at certain point in that liquid so now how exactly we take up the pressure we need to know what is the pressure which is acting on this point so for which we have density is equal to mass by volume so mass is will be equal to volume into density so volume is given in terms of area of this circle into the height into density rho that is your mass so we already know that weight is equal to mass and here we have gravity acceleration due to gravity for weight always mass with respect to acceleration due to gravity it is so what is m m is nothing but a h rho as well as g we know that the weight acts as the force so we know pressure formula is force per unit area that we will study in the next slide so what is the force force is equivalent to that of your weight itself so we have a h rho g divided by a a cancels with a so pressure becomes h rho g so pressure at certain point is h rho g okay so there is height which is the pressure depends upon height the pressure depends upon acceleration due to gravity and the pressure depends upon your density as well so let us check what is meant by pressure now so we know that pressure means force per unit area that means this is an object 
to which there is a pressure or the force which is exerted okay and this area what it covers is the force exerted per unit area is called as the pressure so again it's defined in the same way it's a normal normal means the one which is at 90 degree the angle theta will be 90 degree or it is also called as perpendicular concept that is the pressure is the force is perpendicular to the object okay so the normal force or the fluid thrust it is also called as fluid thrust which is exerted per unit area is known as the pressure okay so volume has been considered over here so it is perpendicular to the object the pressure is the, the, that the force is acting always perpendicular to that of a object that is called as your pressure next is let us see what is atmospheric pressure so you can see the earth here and the atmosphere which is light blue in color that means to say the pressure is exerted towards that planet earth so first of all what is this atmospheric pressure that means pressure means it's a thrust thrust which is applied per unit area on an object so what is this thrust thrust it's the same as pressure exerted by atmosphere per unit area so from what a pressure is exerted it is from the atmosphere so from the atmosphere the pressure is exerted such kind of a pressure is called as atmospheric pressure okay so maximum the atmospheric pr pressure is maximum at the surface of the earth and as the height is decrease in its atmospheric pressure and there is certain instrument to measure each and every quantities physical quantities and now atmospheric pressure is having a certain instrument to be measured and that instrument is called as barometer okay so i hope you are clear with what is meant by the atmospheric pressure and the instrument you can see here this is called as barometer so this identifies the atmospheric pressures at certain levels such as surface or above the surface of the earth okay next is pascal's law so this is one of the most important law that you have to know as well as its, its applications with respect to this chapter first of all you can see that there is a object over here so which has got opening at a b c as well as d the arrow mark shows that there is a pressure which is applied from all the sides that means to say that one side if you exert the pressure it is affected on the molecules and it is exerted towards the other side okay so there are few of the concepts that is the pressure when you apply from here when you exert a force on certain area of the liquid over here that is according to this arrow which I have drawn here there is a force which lifts certain object which is present over here so this can be used as hydraulic lift which is used in automobiles and all automobile industries just for washing of the cars washing of the any of the vehicles like that okay heavy vehicles that is why this is used so as you exert certain amount of force for a less area it is exerted and it moves towards the larger area and the pressure is due to the pressure here it increases the height of the liquid the same thing we study here in case of pascal's law we have external pressure applied to any part of an enclosed mass okay external pressure is applied to the enclosed mass within this okay from the opening of a fluid which is at rest remember the fluid will be at rest it is transmitted undiminished to every portion of the fluid and the walls of the container by reading at the law it's that the statement itself you will get to know what is pascal's law whatever i have explained here okay that means it is transmitted once you exert a pressure or the force the complete thing without diminishing it passes through the walls of the container or to the portion of the fluid that is what exactly we study here with respect to pascal's law so few of the applications of pascal's law is hydraulic lift as we had seen the image in the previous slide and now it is a hydraulic brake see this is a previous image so i told you heavy vehicle in order to lift the heavy vehicle there is a pascal's law which is acting over here and then we have your hydraulic brakes hydraulic brakes see you can see here there is a brake which is actually brake pedal has been kicked so that there is a piston which moves so that there is a force which is act acting over a liquid as a result the wheel stops wheels are caught hold of by the 
to wheel pad okay so that is how exactly your hydraulic brake works so that's all about your applications of pascal's law next we are moving on to buoyancy so in case of buoyancy we can see this is a liquid and there is a object which is placed okay so liquid had certain density even a object has certain amount of weight to it okay so now suppose if you drop any of the light objects suppose suppose if you just think in a lake or in a pond you can see the plastic bottle suppose if you throw the waste a pl waste plastic bottle over it it starts floating and why does it happen because the weight of the bottle that is the weight of the object is very much less than that of the water's density so that is why you can see a force called as buoyancy buoyant force okay that means to say it is the upward thrust the thrust which is exerted on the object upward so that it starts sinking over the top of the liquid okay so it is the upward thrust which is exerted by a fluid on an object which is of a lighter weight which results in floating of the body so this is all about your buoyant force next we are going to streamline flow to see what is streamline flow it's a straight or a curved path such that okay tangent to at a point gives you the direction of flow of a liquid okay so it can be any of the flow just drawing a tangent to a flow of or a point or a flow or something you can get to know how exactly the direction of the flow takes place straight or a curved path such that tangent drawn to a point will give you the direction of the flow such kind of a flow is called as streamline flow so if the fluid flows such that the velocity at a point is always same in magnitude as well as in direction such a flow is also called as a streamline flow suppose if the fluid at at a point suppose if this is a point and there is a flow of fluids in this manner and at this point velocity of each and every particles which comes will be same in case of magnitude and as well as in direction if such a case then such a flow is called as stream line flow that means at that particular place the points whichever the molecules whichever flows will have same velocity with respect to magnitude as well as its direction next we are going to bernoulli's principle so in order to check what is bernoulli's principle we are considering a streamline flow of a fluid so streamline flow for a streamline flow of an incompressible non viscous fluid ideal fluid that means a perfect fluid the sum of potential energy so now we are checking on to potential energy the sum of potential energy kinetic energy and the pressure energy per unit volume at any part remains the constant that is your bernoulli's principle for a streamline flow of a ideal fluid or it is also called as non viscous fluid the sum of potential energy kinetic energy and pressure energy remains to be constant so we know that potential energy is mgh kinetic energy half mv square pressure energy is p is equal to the constant so mgh you know that in case of your potential energy or density instead of your mass we just write density of a liquid and gravity acts as well as your height acts with respect to the potential energy and we have half instead of mass we just write density of a liquid and v square plus pressure energy is given as p and it is a constant so this equation holds good for your bernoulli's principle so next let us go to the illustration of your bernoulli's principle that is when a high velocity of wind blows over a roof during a hurricane low pressure is created over the house top whenever a low pressure is created on the top of the house and the pressure increases below that roof the pressure which is increased below that roof it lifts the roof a slight higher so that the roofs whatever is there it just flies away the same thing happens with respect to your paper also suppose if you blow air below the paper what happens the pressure 
above the paper that is one side of the paper it decreases so that it gets lifted up loosely held paper it just flies away when you just blow from the other side okay the same illustration is with respect to Bernoulli's principle all these comes under Bernoulli's principle concept next we are checking speed of efflux that is outward flow of a fluid that is also called as Torricelli's law okay so Torricelli's found that the speed of efflux that is outward flow of a liquid from an open tank e is given by a formula which is equal to freely falling body okay so let us just check what exactly it is we have our tank with certain opening at a place and this is closed it is filled with the water and the height from this opening is called as O and this H can be called as A. So the height from this place to this place is called as H A and the height from this opening is called as H O. So the total height is called as H. Okay. So here we can check out it moves up with certain velocity V. Okay. So now let us just place this. The velocity at initial point is VA can be equal to 0 but height at initial condition is H. Okay. Next conditions are the velocity at this point that is VO o point where O is placed is maximum we call it as V and the height at this point that is your H becomes HO becomes equal to 0 because at this height all the water from here goes out like this and the height uh, we are checking out this height so H naught is equal to 0. Applying it to Bernoulli's principal condition we have according to Bernoulli's principle we have the equation as rho g h plus half rho v square plus pressure is equal to a constant. We'll have to apply this condition of Bernoulli's principle at point A as well as at point O. So at point A you have density g as well as h a plus half rho v a square plus pressure with respect to a point similarly rho g h o plus half rho v naught square plus pressure at the point o so we have h a is said to be h so rho g h plus half rho into 0 plus p a is equal to H0 is said to be 0 turns out to be 0 plus half and we have rho v square plus p naught. So by taking this as well as this component we have got rho g h is equal to half rho v square. So rho rho gets cancelled and v is equal to root of 2 g h because the pressure as well as pressure both the pressures also gets cancelled out we have velocity is equal to root of 2 g h this is the velocity that is we are checking speed of efflux that means speed of outward flow of a water from a water tank which is open at a midway so this is the set of derivations for it and now we have blood flow and heart attack which is with respect to this pressure concept itself that means how exactly the heart attack is caused for which blood flows in artery and may get constricted due to the accumulation of plague in the inner wall. You can see the dirt which is present over there in the inner wall because of which the flow of blood starts decreasing. Okay, So the speed of the blood in the region of constriction will be increased. As a result, what happens when the speed of the blood flow increases? There is a decrease in the pressure and it can't balance the external pressure because always our internal pressure and external pressure is balanced that is why we are healthy suppose if any imbalance causes there then finally there will be a health issue such as your heart attack the same thing is happening here that is whenever the speed of 
blood is increased at that area they will be decrease in the pressure as a result external pressure which is acting on the heart it will result in collapse of the artery which is present over here heart exert certain pressure to open artery and force the blood through it still ex uh, exert certain pressure to it which will finally end up with the attack okay so this is how exactly the pressure holds good with respect to a human body fluid as well okay so in today's class we have dealt with the mechanical properties of fluids chapter we have studied bernoulli's pascals its illustrations all these important concepts so let us all meet in our next upcoming class until then have a good day thank you